gums suddenly receding down the roots of your teeth, this would be classified as gum recession. And if you want to do something about it and you're searching online, you're probably seeing a lot of conflicting advice from everywhere. And then maybe that conflicts with what your dentist is telling you. And if you're going to listen now, it's going to probably conflict with what I'm telling you. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. We're joined by Dr. Ellie Phillips, a leading expert in dental health, to dive deep into how you can naturally care for your gums and teeth at home. We'll be exploring effective home remedies for receding gums as well as simple yet powerful ways to remineralize your tooth enamel and restore that bright, healthy smile. Stick around for expert tips and actionable advice you can start using right away. Let's listen to the doctor. Oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. Some people tell you to brush and floss more. Some say to use a softer toothbrush, a water pick, interdental brushes. Some people say it cannot be cured. And now you have choices to make because you're being told you need expensive gum surgery. In this video, I want to help explain how you can sort out that kind of advice. And this really involves you trying to discover the real cause of why you have receding gums. You see, we can look at the strategies, we can decide what you can do, but basically the most important thing you can do is actually figure out what is causing this problem and stop yourself from harming your gums. So we have to look at what causes receding gums. But first, let's talk about what receding gums actually look like. You see, gum disease is confused with receding gums. So if you have gum disease, your problem is that your gums are probably puffy, they're redder than usual, and they're swollen. They may bleed when you touch them or brush them. Whereas recession, the gums can be pale. If you have pocketing, that doesn't mean necessarily that you have gum recession. The problem is that after your gums have puffed up, they usually pull away from your tooth surface and you will end up with pocketing, that's that space between the gum and the tooth, and you then can get gum disease occurring in that pocket. So there is a lot of confusion about what is gum recession and what is gum infection or gum disease. What you see in gum recession is that the gum is traveling down the root of the tooth and as the root becomes exposed, it actually opens up the gaps between teeth that are called black triangles. There's nothing there. And when you look at somebody who smiles with gum recession, they don't have the teeth tight together. They have this open space that is black, and we call that a black triangle. I've had people who are really scared when they see the root of their tooth, too, because the root is darker, it's softer, it's a cement surface, and people sometimes think that they're seeing bone. This is not the bone supporting your teeth. This is probably, you don't see that. The gum is always covering the bone. What you are seeing is the root of your tooth, and that can be really sensitive. So what are the reasons for gum recession? Well, wrong in care, wrong products, wrong way of caring for your teeth, the consequence of gum disease, if you are sipping and snacking on acidic things, even if it's a smoothie, that can be too much acidity for a prolonged time. If your mouth is dry, if you are taking medications or you have allergies or you have sinus problems, all of these things can impact your gum health. Now, the pocketing, as I say, separates the gum from the tooth. And usually this means that the the gum, which normally forms a collar around the surface of your tooth at the point where the enamel goes into the root, it starts to move down the root of the tooth. When you have that, you will find that your teeth are very sensitive and they've lost their protection. And so that is when your dentist may have told you, you have started to brush your enamel or the root of your tooth away and they will recommend a soft toothbrush. 
The problem with a soft toothbrush is that the very therapy I'm going to recommend requires that you stimulate healing cells. And you can't stimulate healing cells with a soft toothbrush. So I understand this is confusing. I understand there's conflicting and both sides are right. Your dentist is right that if you have exposed cement and if you have soft enamel, brushing your teeth can in fact dislodge the enamel cells and make them fall off your teeth and you'll have a groove often along a whole chain of molar teeth at the back of your mouth. Wrong products can also cause a recession because you lose the protection, which is called biofilm, that normally protects your teeth from trauma. Now, many of the things the dentist is recommending to you is stuff that they have been sold, marketing. This is because there are products, sensitive, sensitive toothpastes and remineralizing toothpaste that kind of put a band-aid. You're going to feel better, but it isn't solving the underlying problem and it's not solving your gum recession. So although these sensitive pastes may help you, they will in the end just continue the problem, which is why dentists say gum, gum recession doesn't reverse, not with those products. The other thing that sometimes happens is the dentist will recommend for you a very powerful mouth rinse, thinking that powerful is good. And chlorhexidine is one of these powerful mouth rinses in a professional dental office arsenal. When you rinse with chlorhexidine, the problem is that you will mess up the good bacteria in your mouth. You potentially will mess up this protective biofilm. And although the dentist is recommending this to try to help you, it may actually work against you. So you have to decide if you're going to listen to your dentist and follow their suggestions for gum recession, or if perhaps you could ask for a delay and try some completely different things that I am going to recommend for you. And the recommendation, I believe, you could try for three months, 12 weeks, and gum recession usually has taken years to occur. So perhaps a period of 12 weeks just trying something to see if perhaps that will help you is a worthwhile interval. The other thing a dentist might recommend for you is to put little white fillings to block up the gaps that have been caused, this, this groove. They're called class five fillings. They're usually a plastic. I would absolutely, totally tell you, please do not do that, not straight away anyway, because the filling itself causes irritation, causes plaque to build up around the filling, and this will only make the recession worse. There is no harm in living with the groove. If you have a clean mouth, if you don't collect plaque, and if the groove doesn't collect a lot of food for you and become annoying. I have gum recession myself. Here is my personal story. When I was a dental student, I was on a grapefruit diet, which was the latest thing at the time. Then I would brush my teeth. And it is the long period of acidity and this extreme acidity from citrus fruits that is incredibly damaging to the enamel. Damaged enamel or acid softened enamel is easily brushed away. And with my tooth brushing, I made a groove all around my mouth. I have upper and lower molar recession and also a groove caused during that time. I have learned what to do. I practice what I preach. My gums are absolutely tight at that level, which isn't ideal. I wish I had known this when I was a teenager. I at least learned this when I was 20. And my gums have not moved, have never become infected. I have never needed a gum graft. I have never had a filling in any of those grooves ever. And they have remained 50 plus years, just fine. I get a little bit of sensitivity now and again if I am out in the extreme cold, if I've eaten a lot of sugar, if my immune system is a little under the weather, my teeth may feel a tiny bit sensitive if I suck in air or have something really, really cold or something sweet. But the sensitivity is quick and it goes away. I use the strategies that I teach everybody 
and I am happily living with gum recession. It doesn't always have to be treated. So as mentioned, prolonged acidity or acidity from citrus or strong vitamin C, uh, smoothies, oxalic acid foods, even sugar-free things, prolonged acidity can cause a loss of your protection and therefore promote recession. Stress, things that dry your mouth, um, if you are drinking sparkling waters, going to bed at night, not protecting your teeth fully, the hormonal change during pregnancy, during menopause, you will find that your mouth is more acidic. And as I mentioned, brushing in an acidic environment is a problem. My Complete Mouth Care System and Xylitol deal with acidity. I don't have to repeat it all here. Same thing if you have a dry mouth. And dry mouth, just one thing to tell people, that excess vitamin D and also zinc can dry your mouth. You may have teeth that uh, are short, uh, always exposed, an open bite. You may sleep with your mouth open that dries your teeth and can put them at risk for all kinds of things, including gum recession. So be aware that all of these things that I teach, the strategies I teach are all connected the same way. If you constantly sip any drinks, you are going to dilute the one thing that can help your gums regrow. And the help comes from your own saliva. It is the liquid in your mouth that can help heal your teeth and make them so they don't wear away and help heal your cement on any exposed surfaces and make it less sensitive. So the idea is that you use my strategies, my complete mouth care system, Xylitol, and plenty of time to allow your saliva to interact and heal your gums and your teeth. And I have seen this help so many people, especially young women, people who go regularly for three months or four months cleanings, the less cleanings you have, I think you're going to find the less recession you experience. But you will need cleanings until you have your mouth in balanced oral health. The same thing with flossing. Excess flossing can damage your gums. Of course you want to keep your mouth healthy. And unless you're using my complete mouth care system, you may have this conflicting advice. You have so much plaque, you need to floss. But on the other hand, I'm saying don't floss, but I am saying use other strategies to clean your teeth using the mouth rinses that I recommend, the very special kind of toothbrushes that really get a lot of particles out from between your teeth so gently and safely, far more safely than flossing. And the Xylitol, which stops plaque eventually from even forming on your teeth. So it isn't that I'm telling you to not floss. I am simply saying that aggressive flossing, over flossing, having more cleanings than you need, all of these things can exacerbate the problem of gum recession. So my suggestions again would be to use xylitol in the method that I recommend, which is after meals and then don't eat or drink anything, even sipping water for an hour afterwards and also last thing at night and again at some point in the day when you will not be eating or drinking afterwards enjoy the benefits of my complete mouth care system that work in synergy what not only with your saliva it actually makes the minerals from your saliva go more quickly into your teeth but it also works in synergy with xylitol to make less plaque and, and make your mouth healthier. And I think anybody who tries this, even try it for 30 days, you will feel a difference in your mouth health. I do recommend certain specific toothbrushes, as I mentioned, and use them to massage the gums in a way that will stimulate healing. And when you try that, you will know whether your mouth suddenly feels healthier and if it does, maybe you try it for three months and then go back for an evaluation. Do you still need a graft? Do you still need a deep cleaning? Whatever the dentist is recommending, you may want to just wait and evaluate. 
because a graft, if you are going to have a skin graft, which is kind of like a skin band-aid over the receded area of the gum, the lost area of gum tissue, it would be much more likely that that skin graft is going to take, is going to heal and be part of your gum if your mouth is healthy, if you can maintain it in a healthy mouth. Nobody, no dermatologist is going to do a skin graft in the middle of infection or if, if you still are damaging that area for some reason. And that brings me to my last point. Recently, I've had people that I've been unable to help. And it's been really concerning to me because I have always seen gum recession as soon as my friends, you know, stopped flossing, finally believed me 20 years ago. They were like, Ellie, wow, my gums regrew. They were shocked, but they finally realized what the, the excess flossing was one of the problems. Other people were going for cleanings so frequently, they were sort of causing their own problems. People with dry mouth, we solve it with xylitol. Suddenly their gum recession gets better. But because of YouTube and reaching so many more people, I've had a few cases where it hasn't worked. And I have actually explored those cases individually with certain people. And every single time we have found that the problem appears to be they are wearing a retainer. One lady had been wearing a retainer for 15 years, struggling with gum recession for 15 years. We took out the retainer that she was wearing every night and the recession started to improve and has kept improving and is almost completely now healed. The other cases are people who have moved their teeth with Invisalign. They move their teeth into a place where those teeth are no longer functioning. They look great, but they're not in function. They're no longer working like teeth work. Where teeth actually bite together. They feel each other as they bite up and down. They move into that position. And if your Invisalign or your braces have moved your teeth into some kind of position that looks great, but your teeth are not working, that may be a reason. And I can't help you until your teeth are working again. So that would be a problem, even though it's a gum problem, that you might want to talk either with your periodontist, your gum specialist, and or your orthodontic specialist. And I do know people who went back to do that and they were told, no way. The problem is I keep seeing this. So I'm not sure how we're going to handle this. I think anyone doing Invisalign should keep photo documentation. Take a picture of your teeth or find a picture of your teeth before you had Invisalign. And if you're suffering from gum recession on a tooth that's been moved and moved out of the arch in some way or expanded, see if it's biting against the lower tooth. And if it isn't, you do your own assessment and see. I don't know what else to tell you at this point. Try everything else that I recommend. But if a tooth isn't working, one of nature's ways is that the, the, the attachment starts to deteriorate. So we have to look very carefully. And I would advise anyone starting out on Invisalign, take lots of pictures either at the orthodontist or by yourself first and keep an eye to make sure that you're not losing your gum tissue because eventually more and more gum recession will take the gum lower and lower down the tooth. The bone will necessarily recede at the same pace. And when the bone is all gone, that is when a tooth can fall out. Actually, I'll end on a happier note. I worked with a, a child, or actually was a young adult, with Down syndrome. She was in her early 20s, and unfortunately, in Down syndrome, the pressure of, t of the tongue, which is usually a little bigger than normal, was pushing against the lower teeth and pushing them forward, making it really hard to clean around the base, around the gums of the lower teeth. This has gone on for some years, and in her early adult years, this patient had developed periodontal disease, gum disease. She had lost a significant attachment. Her gum recession had reached halfway down the roots. She had lost bone, 50% of the bone loss. And several dentists told the mother there was nothing that could be done. These teeth must be extracted. 
She had found me through my book, Kiss Your Dentist Goodbye. We talked on the phone, we consulted, and then she went away. And I didn't hear from her. I think I heard from her sporadically that everything was going well. They were happy and they were just going to do this for a period of time. I actually got a phone call 11 years later, and I have posted that phone call on TikTok and on YouTube because I think it's fascinating that 11 years later, this patient, this young girl, now has all the gum recession grown back, the bone has grown back, these then loose teeth are now totally healthy, and this patient even no longer needs cleanings. She has her teeth, she has a healthy mouth, she is happy, her mother's happy, I am ecstatic. Did you know that healthy tooth enamel is as hard as steel? In fact, a little bit harder. There is a way, even if you have weak enamel, that you can harden it. And I really saw this in a story that was from many, many years ago. I, once upon a time when I came to America as a dentist, I was working as a dentist, but I also was running a restaurant. And one of my really good looking waiters was sure that he wanted whiter teeth. So he was consistently whitening his teeth with artificial whitening products. And artificially whitening your teeth is going to weaken the tooth enamel and make it brittle and fragile. And I kept telling him that those whitening products were going to damage his enamel, going to make his teeth weaker, and they would start to break. Well, he didn't listen to me. He was a good looking guy and wanted white teeth and carried on. And one day, however, he was opening a beer bottle on one of his incisor teeth and off flew a chip of his tooth. So then he began to listen to me and came and was very sorry that he had fractured his front tooth. He went to the dentist to get his chipped part fixed, but we actually worked then together on strengthening his enamel because weak enamel can be strengthened. It's a simple equation between how often you damage your enamel and how often every day you are strengthening your enamel. So he began using the strategies that I would recommend to anybody who has fragile teeth with cracks in them or teeth that chip easily. He got on my complete mouth care system, which every night would put, help put minerals back into his teeth while he was sleeping. And what he discovered was not only did his teeth feel great, but they whitened even more than he had been able to whiten them because they were whitening because they were getting harder and hard teeth are naturally whiter. And he used xylitol in the way that I recommend to cut acidity from the end of meals instead of it damaging your teeth for a long time. He was able to use the xylitol and my complete mouth care system and his teeth got harder and harder. The story continues because the following winter, he unfortunately slipped on the ice in Rochester where we were, and he landed with his teeth on his upper jaw, jamming into an iron railing, and nothing fractured, nothing. His teeth literally were stronger than the railing. Had that happened some while earlier, he would have been a mess, but nothing chipped. There was no damage. In fact, I still hear from Rodney telling me that he goes to the dentist and his teeth are in super great shape. This is now years, 30 plus years later. So anyone can do what he did with his teeth, using the strategies that protect your teeth, that strengthen the enamel, and it can become resilient again. That's what the property of enamel is so unique. It's not only strong, but it is able to be dented, to be moved. On the Mohs hardness scale, which is a scale to show the strength of teeth, the hardness of teeth, tooth enamel comes in at the hardness number of five and steel at the hardness number of 4.5. So that is why we know that healthy enamel is harder than steel. It actually can resist scratching. It actually is an incredibly strong substance. As you know, they found teeth that are thousands and thousands of years old. You know, they are there where the archeologists dig them up long after the bones of the people have disappeared. 
And yet we can destroy teeth within a few years if we eat and drink and don't take care of our mouth in a sensible way. But when we start sipping and snacking, particularly all through the afternoon or all through the morning, you've got a cup of coffee or you're sipping even water, you are diluting your saliva. You are thinning the liquid in your mouth that when it's healthy, carries minerals to your teeth. But if you're sipping water, you are just washing those minerals right away. They're not having the opportunity to land on your enamel and go in to grow the enamel crystals and put in minerals where they've been lost. That's how you develop strong, resilient enamel. So the advice I would give anybody who's finding that their teeth feel weak or they've chipped is use my complete mouth care system twice a day. Use xylitol at the end of meals and then don't eat or drink for an hour or so afterwards. And you'll see and feel a change very quickly and the changes will continue for up to two years, making your teeth stronger and stronger. And this is really applicable to anybody who's had fillings in their teeth. If you've already got fillings in your teeth, Perhaps you're somebody, the fillings have fallen out. The fillings don't usually deteriorate. Most fillings are fine, they stay for life. What deteriorates is the edge around the fillings. Your enamel gets brittle, it chips, and it opens up a groove where liquids can get in and percolate down and round and under a filling. So if you keep your enamel strong and healthy and resilient, you can keep a filling in your mouth for life. They don't have to be continuously changed. So those are the advantages of having strong, healthy enamel. Not only are they less likely to break, but also any filling or repair you have done is more likely to last you, hopefully, for life. Next, watch the Dr. Ellie Phillips Club playlist for more information on more dental health. Thanks for watching Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence-based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments, your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep deprocessing for a healthier, longer future. Let's make this journey together.